good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, talking about the turning point brought me to think about the different way which exists in the world to look to the philosophy, the philosophy of the world. There is a one a philosophy which says the shortest distance between point A and B is a direct line. That's how we come and we start having one turning point or two in our lives. But I'm coming from education, from a civilization that has looked in a different way to the same things which has come from Descartes. And they, they believe that the shortest distance between point A and B is not a direct line. It's a spiral. It's a spiral in which every moment of the life is a turning point. Is every, every moment, every time that we meet someone, we are in different places, we are uh, encountering different stories, it's become our turning point. And that's why I do believe that each of us, we have made of it every moment, every different turning point. Looking back to myself, what was for me the, my turning point? I do remember growing in a civilization with the poetry as a main art and main things about it. So I start growing up with the poetry, the poetry that has been like Persian poetry and other countries' poetry has been my main source of inspiration from my childhood. Hafez, Saadi, Nizami Ganjavi, Rumi's, Fazuli, Saber, they are all poets that has really started by treating me and by educating me the, the way which I'm looking to the world. Actually, I always has one of them thinking about it, that traced all my life, one of those poetry, which says, I said, what about my eyes? He said, keep them on the road. I said, what about my passion? He said, keep it burning. I said, what about my heart? He said, what you hold on it? And I said, joy, pain, and sorrow. And he said, stay with it. This was my first turning point in my life, encountering poetry and starting understanding the world through the eyes of the poets, of the words of the poet, the wisdoms of the poet. But very soon, I start understanding that photography is also the image is becoming an important language. And starting learning from the very, very young ages. Actually, when I was 14 years old, I started photography. And very quick, I understand what is the images, the power. The power of visual storytelling to change the world for social changes. And this was my second turning point, coming to understand the, the power of the photography, the power of visual storytelling, the understanding that uh, what is the best tool for me. And my main tool at this moment started in this ten turning point, became the photography. That's how the photography was followed me and Still, I keep working on it, but the main thing for me was to understand how image, how photography is becoming the main tool of the power of the 21st centuries. Doing this, obviously, especially being in, the, in my yo youngest ages, in Iran, in a country which telling the truth was not allowed. Actually, it is the same things now in all over the world. Telling the truth, somehow, it is not allowed. But for me, in these ages, talking about the photography, being, telling the truth, showing the, the framing, what is the reality is it? 
brought me years of the prison, years of the torture, and encountering what is the br br brutality of the humanity, is it? This was what's happened during the, my, my first moments of the starting telling the truth. The same way which is happening now, we, we now understanding that even if it, in our words, leaking information is brought you prison, it can bring you to exile, it can bring you to exile. And I understand it also very soon. Uh, exile has become my another turning point to understanding that somehow because I was leaking the information, that I was telling the truth, so I was framing the truth. So I had to go and flee my country, and the whole world became my country. Exot. This was the, another turning point for me. But then, following this road of the exile, exile bring you understanding that we are all one humanity. That there is not such an, such, something like such a one land for each body. There is no one country. It is for every different nations. We are all similar. That's how the power of, the, of this exile was for me. And every time meeting people, every time talking to them in a different places, like one day I met this old, wise Afghan man. He was fleeing the Russian bombardment. The Russian has invaded Afghanistan and bombarding and killing people. And we were just few of us, journalists, photographer, human rights people, watching what was happening. And then this old man, he has fled the bombardment of his countries. He's coming and settling there. He became one of the people who became my masters of the thoughts. He looks to me, he said that, keep your home at your home, wherever you go. Another turning point, very important, when I understand what is meaning resistant. When, when I met hundreds of the different resistant, of different levels, different people all over the world, seeing that how they are resisting. And obviously, imagine meeting someone like Masood, one of them, one of those resistant, meeting him in a small valley in Afghanistan. His country is invaded with 100,000 of the soldiers. And he's saying that, I will train 100 people, and I will defeat this 100,000 soldiers. And he did it. He did by training 100 people to defeat 100,000 people. This was a turning point for me to understand what is the power of the resistance meaning. What is meaning that you are defending your country that is saying that it's occupied by some other countries. But not, not only he defeated the Russian army, I do understand that sometimes a movement in one part of the globe, it's make a storm in the other part of the globe. By defeating Russian army, the Berlin Wall fell down. The Soviet Union collapsed. The whole world has changed. But who did it? Some Afghan resistance started it. No doubt about it. This was so, but it was not only the resistant fighters. I, uh, I'm in Sarajevo, in the middle of the war, the snipers killing people, and I come to this little girl. She became another symbol of me. Nobody comes out in these days. It's, the city is sieged. She's, and I saw standing there in a cold weather and chilly weather, a few days before Christmas, selling the dolls the best things that she ever had in her lives. And I said, why are you selling this? She said, because my grandmother 
hasn't eaten for four days. So these are becoming also different parts of the resistance, understanding how people could resist. But then one day I realized that hunger is killing field for innocent. The massacres of the innocents happening under our eyes. We can move 100,000 soldiers and 10,000 tanks in 24 hours, but we cannot bring food for people that are dying from hunger. And that has become a turning point for me to understand what is this hunger. And I met him, or her maybe, and I find this modern statue of the Rodan thinking, the dignity of the humanity, and questioning us. Why? Why humanity should live us dying from hunger. These are the turning point of the life. But these are not only the dark side of the humanity. For me, the most important is the beauty of the humanity. Because if you don't love the humanity, if you don't love the, the beauty, you will not defend it. So the, the beauty ha is the main and essence of the humanity. That's how in all my works, I was always also looking where is the, the best and most important things of the humanity, the beauty, the beauty of the soul. This is the most important things. We have all, we all have it, the humanity. W walking in the highest mountains of the Guatemala, meeting this lady, coming and offering flowers. This is the beauty of the humanity. That's how if, if you don't love people, you will not defend them. This is the, the most essence and important thing that I always try to understand it and then giving back. But then following my road, following my, my, my road in the world, in the middle of the destroyed village, in the middle of the war in Afghanistan, when nothing has left, and I met this little boy coming out of the school with this plant, he has learned in the school how to grow it. And I ask him, when I'm photographing him, hey, what are you going to do with this? His answer has become one of my main mentors. He's became also a philosophy for me. He said, well, look around. There was, everything was destroyed in the village by the war. Nothing was left. He said, I will grow a tree out of it. And this has become, for me, every work saying that, okay, yeah, let's grow tree out of the, uh, everything that destroyed. Some destroying our planet, we will grow tree out of it. But it was not only photography. I started spreading this for the past 30 years by training thousands of thousands of the people in the media, starting from the refugee camps, training hundreds of the refugees to become and empowering them to become the storytellers of their own stories. That's how we could change the world. That's how if the people that live in the story, they are able to tell their stories. This is in Uganda, refugee people. Now they are telling their own stories to us. Or started with this foundation, Photography for Humanity. Oh, and this is which is starting telling that Mobile cinema, starting moving mobile cinemas from villages to villages, telling the stories, but stories that is done by own people. Education brought to the homes, education happening in the home. And all of them comes to my mind when I understand that the existing humanitarian organization, they are dealing with the, what we call it the physical destruction. But the main destruction, the main destruction is destructions of the soul, is destructions of the, what we don't see, it is invisible destructions. It's destructions of the culture, human relation. That's how, for me, was the 21st century needs a new organization. That's why I started my organization, the, the 21st century organization that empowers women, empower people, to become the storytellers of their stories. Not only in Afghanistan, in refugee camps, 
this is also working uh, in Sicilia, in Italy, in Toulouse, in the Mirai, in north of the Paris, in the very, very tough suburb places. Because if people understand to tell their stories, that's how we will make the connection. That's how we will be able to bring the humanity to understand each other. That's how we have these new tools, the tools of the freedom. But photography is also a way of the conveying the messages. When in Iran, a few years ago, in the demonstration, a girl was shot directly and was filmed by mobile phone, has become the first use of the mobile phone and becoming the citizen journalism. She was called Neda, and I created this installation, art. Anyway, for me, the visual art is a solution for a lot of problems of the humanity. The visual art is a solution for a lot of problems of the humanity, and I do believe in it. I do believe that we will come the, the, the same way that being in the wars and being war correspondent I became a peace correspondent. The, the same way that being a peace correspondent brought me to start trainings and having foundation and giving the, all this knowledge to the other people to tell their stories. In the same way, I do believe that humanity, we will overcome. We will overcome the difficulties that we will be able finally to look back which will be happen our ancestor, our, our descendant will look back to us the 21st century, will say our ancestors were barbarian. Instead of putting their budget to the education, they were building tanks and guns. And then, obviously, for me, the most important things was the love. With no love in any lives, anybody's, there is no turning point. We will not turn the love. That was the, the most important things for me. And all of them, all the humanity is covered by love and passion and dreams. So that was the whole dream which I had, dream for humanity, dream of the peace and being everybody in a peaceful. And I'm using visual art for it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.